Hello everyone, bringing you a video today talking about this and this is the 1949 pattern battle dress which featured recently in the video looking at first issue 1958 pattern web equipment and I thought it would be interesting to talk about this in a little bit more detail um, both the jacket itself, uh, the blouse itself excuse me and the insignia uh, which is present on it because it's quite indicative of the time period of this uniform is supposed to represent. So this isn't a mannequin of the month per se, uh, not, not in that style, but it's more to just talk about the uniform details we have here. There's no other equipment or anything. Uh, obviously it's set off with the wool shirt and tie uh, at the neck there, uh, as is fitting. Um, but we also have the blue beret, uh, still standard at the time of course, and this is badged to the Mersham Brigade. Now there's an interesting uh, selection of insignia on this uniform which we're going to talk about, um, some of which when we move it round. The British Army at this time period uh, you, infantry regiments wore a cap badge dependent upon their administrative brigade. Uh, in this case the Mersham Brigade, there were uh, several others, uh, and it basically geographically uh, it depended on which administrative brigade you would be assigned to. Um, the regiments uh, therefore wore the brigade cap badge, although they retained their regimental shoulder titles. And this was because a lot of regiments had been reduced to one battalion, and it made sense to group these battalions under one cap badge in one brigade for administrative purposes. That said, you would then be deployed out, the battalions would be deployed out to units in the field. So in this instance, as we'll see as we move this round, it's 6th Infantry Brigade. Another thing indicative of the time period, which is 1960s in this instance, early 1960s, is the collar badge, uh, and this has became quite common uh, around this time period to wear collar badges on 1949 battle dress, uh, as the uniform was being treated as more of a number, number two dress at this time period before the actual new number two service dress uh, came into use in a big way. Um, so there was a, an attempt essentially to smarten up 1949 pattern battle dress. Other than that, it is exactly the standard 1949 pattern battle dress you would expect. The notch lapel, uh, obviously buttonhole and the lapel up here, pleated front pockets with an exposed button, but then we have the concealed buttons down the front there. Simple blackened buckle at the waist there. As I say, all the standard features of 1949 pattern battle dress. There's nothing particularly special about the battle dress itself. We'll move this round now and we'll have a look at the insignia on the arm. So the insignia we have on the left arm here, as already mentioned, is the shoulder title of the regiment, which is the Cheshire's, as you can see there. And that marries up to the acorn uh, and oak leaves collar badge we have on the collar there. And then underneath that we have the cross key and bayonet of 6th Infantry Brigade on a blue background. 5th Infantry Brigade would wear a similar badge but with a blue 5 on a red background. Uh, and this is uh, the brigade that the unit was assigned to in 1962, part of the British Army of the Rhine. And that's essentially the unit they're actually serving within the field, whereas the cap badge represents the administrative brigade that they are uh, brigaded with um, for purposes of administration. As I say, otherwise the blouse, as you can see, is a standard. You've got the curve to the arm there, slightly curved forward, which is a you know, key part of uh, battle dress design. Basically, if you're positioning your arms like this, the sleeve is formed for that, uh, that purpose. Uh, single button at the cuff there, as is standard with 1949 pattern battle dress. We'll move this round now and have a look at the back. At the back here, you can see the single seam running down the rear. Uh, slightly earlier to this, it was not uncommon to see a single crease pressed across the shoulders here, sometimes two. Uh, photographs from the 1960s show that this seems to have died out, at least in some units, and photographs are found of the Cheshire's at this time period. Um, they don't have the creases across the back of the blouse, so I've omitted that here. Um, it was just a, a stylistic element of the uniform, certainly in the 1950s, uh, particularly during the National Service era, to see uh, crease pressed into the shoulders there, uh, very common to see. Uh, we'll move this around now and have a look at the right. On the right hand side here again we can see the Cheshire shoulder title and the 6th Infantry Brigade badge below. Um, during the 1950s uh, it was common for troops to wear their administrative or training brigade badge on one arm and the assigned brigade badge, the, the brigade they were serving within the field, on the other. Um, but by this point it seems that that, that pa passed away as a, as a practice and you'd wear your, uh, because obviously you've moved to having a cap badge for your brigade, um, you'd wear the brigade badge uh, that you've been assigned to for service in the field on each arm rather than one on, on one on one only and then having your uh, training or administrative brigade badge on the other. So that's a slight change in the 60s or very late 50s um, to British Army uniform. So I've turned the blouse inside out now just for interest's sake to have a look at the details of the interior. Much as this is a standard 1949 pattern battle dress, there are detail variations in 1949 pattern 
which are nevertheless interesting. One of which is the fact the lining material here, and you can see the belt there itself is lined as well, uh, and the internal pockets, um, it's made of herringbone twill, um, which is an unusual uh, uh, material for British to see on British uniforms. Normally the lining material would be a khaki drill material. Um, this is made in the Royal Ordnance Factory in Chorley in 1950, so it's a 1950 dated, relatively early blouse, but when it came to me it had never been issued, so there's nothing to say that a blouse of that age wouldn't be in stock and issued out in the late 50s, early 60s. Um, as I say, it's an unusual lining material, and we'll see that in more detail when we take a look at this in close up here, the label. Uh, you can also see here the backs of the collar badges with the plate and the split pin through there. Uh, and obviously you can see the cuffs are lined as well. Um, and obviously the two internal breast pockets here, you can see you get access to those in there. Um, and obviously lined up to the, excluding the top buttonhole there. Um, the lining otherwise runs down the front. Looking at the side here, you can see the, the arm. And if we lift this up here, you can see the side seam there as well. And again, the lining running all the way around the, the belt, the internal belt there. Uh, around the waist. Looking to the rear here we can see the two buttonholes which allow the blouse to be buttoned onto the trousers. This is something that was common throughout battle dress, uh, different patterns of battle dress. You would be able to button the blouse onto the trousers to make sort of one integral suit. Uh, you can see on the uh, shoulders here is strengthening piece here for where the button attaches for the epaulette and then the single seam running down the rear there. And looking at the right sleeve here you can't really see anything else uh, of note that we've not already looked at. It's mirror image of the other side as you can see there um, the way the arm attaches underneath and the sleeve uh, the side seam running down there as you can see um, so that's a look at the inside of the battle dress Here you can see the label on the blouse uh, and you can see it's labeled battle dress blouse 1949 pattern size number 10 and then you have the sizing details beneath that and then ROF Chorley uh, which is relatively local to me um, or was uh, 1950 which is obviously the date of manufacture and then underneath to the left we have size 10 well 10 stamped again on directly onto the lining material which is the size and you can also see here the detail of the lining material which as you can see is a, is a herringbone twill as opposed to drill material in this green color uh, normally it would be khaki just a manufacturing variation which is slightly interesting to, to take note of so there we are that was just a brief run through some of the details of this battle dress uniform uh, the battle dress blouse and both the insignia and a look at some of the details of the actual blouse itself um, just for interest's sake really and hopefully you have found it interesting uh, if you have and you'd like to see more of this sort of content then obviously please do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already uh, and if you have subscribed or you're newly subscribing make sure that you hit the little notification button the little bell down below which will give you the option to be alerted when i upload future videos is a good way of keeping uh, up with what's going on on the channel if you really like my uploads and you'd like to support the channel, you can do. There's both a Patreon and a PayPal link down below. Big thank you to everyone who supported me via those two methods and continues to do so. It, is, it really is very much appreciated and thank you very much for that. Um, if you want to keep up with the channel on social media, there is, of course, Twitter, Facebook and Instagram all linked down below. Uh, you can follow on one of those, should you, which, whichever your preference is. But if you don't particularly use social media and you'd like to make contact, there is also an email address down below as well where um, you can get in touch ask questions, share photos, that sort of thing. Uh, but that's everything I wanted to cover in this video. So until next time, bye for now.